um, this video uh, I will continue from the uh, previous video about chapter 2 signal analysis and mixing so to continue uh, I will explain about frequency spectrum and bandwidth uh, I think for term of frequency spectrum and bandwidth I already uh, tell you about it a little bit very general term uh, in chapter 1 as well as in previous um, uh, video okay so the frequency spectrum is actually um, is actually a, a place that we try to see what are the co what are the frequency that contain in a signal all right and we can see this uh, via using a spectrum analyzer and then we can try to sketch or draw uh, using frequency domain on uh, on a paper okay with the uh, frequency at the x-axis the bandwidth is actually the range of frequency contained in the spectrum or what we can say is the bandwidth where we take the highest frequency uh, in the signal minus with the, the lowest frequency that the signal has so the bandwidth is the difference between the highest and the lowest frequency so looking at this uh, figure, this is actually uh, an example of voice frequency spectrum and also telephone circuit bandwidth where the voice has frequency spectrum around 300 to 3000 hertz and the bandwidth, if we can try to see over here, we take the 3000 hertz to be the highest frequency minus with 300 hertz to be the lowest frequency so the bandwidth here is 2700 hertz when we take 3000 minus 300 hertz and we can see that on the uh, uh, the most voice energy will be around 400 to 600 uh, hertz where the spectrum has the highest um, the highest uh, peak around this uh, frequency okay so when we want to see what is actually with this frequency spectrum is actually contain the power that the signal has so if we have we can see this uh, in the spectrum analyzer the power below the line of the spectrum lies the power that the signal has so power spectrum of 25 of a 25 percent duty cycle uh, rectangular pulse so most of the power is within the primary lobe so this is the primary lobe correct and the bandwidth of communication channel is sufficient pass only the frequencies within the primary loop uh, then transfer most of the energy contained in the pulse so this will be the one that we talk about and not this one all right so the most energy will come from here from primary loop another one is what we call i need to explain to you is effect of band limiting on signal so all communication channels have limited a bandwidth uh, so that a lot of information can be transmitted by not uh, interrupting by the noise okay uh, but how we can have this by limiting the bandwidth uh, it will actually change the shape of the signal for instance we have this one kilohertz square wave and when we use a, a low pass filter and the cut off frequency we try to put to set at 8 kilohertz meaning that only uh, a frequency that less than 8 kilohertz will remain and the rest will be uh, 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 eliminated so the shape already been changed with this kind of uh, ripples okay and then when we set the low pass filter to be 6 kilohertz at, as the cut off frequency the shape of the waveform getting stronger get more ripples here 
okay and then when do when we try to get the cut off frequency to be lower and lower until 2 kilohertz the pulse signal that we had earlier has become a sinusoidal signal okay very nice sinusoidal signal so by limiting the bandwidth the signal the shape of the signal can be changed from as we can see here from the pulse signal to be a cosine or sine signal okay next is about mixing process as you know the modulation process is actually a mixing process of two signals the information signal and also the carrier signal so mixing is actually a process of combining two or more signal and it's very essential process in electronic communication systems there are two ways of mixing uh, methods or what we call as summing one using linear mixing another one is non-linear mixing so linear mixing here basically the mixing process use that use linear device and for non-linear mixing is the mixing process that use uh, non-linear device so we're going to learn more on this for linear summing or linear mixing uh, it will be done by using a uh, linear device such as passive network or small signal amplifier and then during the process all right at the output there will be no new frequency will be produced the same frequency you use in the input at the input will be uh, will be at the output as well and combined waveform is simply the linear addition of the individual signals in terms of amplitudes, not the frequency. So to explain to you better, this is the single input frequency amplification. So we want, uh, because this only use single input, it doesn't actually mix uh, with other signal, but basically uh, amplify by using an amplifier. So we have a FA over here as a frequency and the amplitude will be the VA over here at the input. So when the signal pass through a linear amplifier with the gain A, right, this is the gain, the output that this signal will have is the amplitude will be the multiplication of the gain and also the uh, voltage at the input or amplitude at the input but for the frequency will be the rim uh, we remain the same as what we had uh, at in the uh, input okay but when we see on the uh, wave uh, sorry oscilloscope as well as a spectrum analyzer the shape of the signal will be slightly different where the amplitude of the signal at the output over here will be a little bit higher than the one we had in the input and for the uh, spectrum uh, sorry frequency spectrum it will give us the same frequency but with slightly higher amplitude compared to the input signal okay so this will be the multiple input frequency amplification where at the input we have two signal a and b with the amplitude va frequency fa uh, for signal b we have vb as amplitude and fb as the uh, frequency uh, at the input so these two signal will be mixed and pass through a linear amplifier with the gain a all right this is the gain and at the output what happened is the output the amplitude of the output signal will be the summation of signal A and B with a multiplication of gain A. And the frequency at the output will be the summation of the frequency A and frequency B. Right? So when we see on the time domain via oscilloscope, we will see that this will be the signal A, this is the signal B, and this is the output. Uh, waveform so we can see this is actually the combination uh, signal between a and b but for the frequency domain this is the input uh, frequency spectrum we can see that it has v uh, sorry fa and fb frequency with va and vb but at the output 
uh, frequency spectrum, we see the same F a and f b but with a higher or greater value of the amplitude over here when the, the gain of the amplifier is also taking into v a and v b uh, multiplication okay for non-linear summing or non-linear mixing is a process where we use two or more signals combined in a non-linear device uh, such as diode or large signal amplifier. And in this process, at the output, an additional frequency components will be produced. And the inputs combined is actually in non-linear fashion, which means it's actually not necessary when we have uh, two volt with the five volt and become seven volt at the output. It may become other than seven and it's not fixed all right so as the uh, as an example we have this single input frequency amplification where at the input we have one signal a signal f a and b a but using non-linear amplifier with the gain a b and c so at the output we can see that the voltage of v a will be uh will be multiplied with the a b and c with very uh, complicated uh, uh, way of summing and for the frequency as well we have uh, fa over here at the input but at the output we see the fa 2 fa and become 3 fa and add. in fact there will be added to other things as well so when we see on the time domain and frequency domain uh, on oscilloscope and also spectrum analyzer, we can see that the difference between uh, input and output is very wide or very large. Where the input, we have this very simple uh, sine wave, but at the output, we will see this ripple and also uh, additional frequency come out at the spectrum. So the single input amplification basically will produce what we call as harmonics. So this is actually the harmonics, uh, the additional frequency that produced uh, based by the uh, mixing process inside the nonlinear amplifiers. So if we read over here. The non-linear amplification actually results the generation of multiple harmonics of that frequency. So if we want this harmonic inside our system, then it will call as frequency multiplication. But if we don't want the harmonics to be inside our system, it will be the interference and it is called harmonic distortion. Okay. Next is the example when we have multiple input and then mix together using nonlinear amplifier, right? And it will be very complicated where actually, when we have only two signal A and B, at the output, there will be a lot more complicated uh, credit summation resulted from the uh, mixing process of nonlinear mixing. So even we have very, a uh, simple sine wave at the input like this v a and v b uh, signal a and signal b at the output it will be very different signal uh, and very complex signal and when we see the signal through spectrum analyzer we will see we only has two frequency at the input but at the output it will come out as uh, this uh, peaks all right a lot of peak that has various harmonics and cross product of frequency fa and fb so the based on the non-linear mixing using multiple inputs all right when the mixing process happens it will produce uh, two or more frequency uh, mixed together at the output of non-linear device so this Frequency actually came from a cross product. I think we have learned cross product in chapter one uh, of the frequency. That means the summation and also the differences uh, between the frequency we had at the input. So if we want this cross product inside our system, then it will call as modulation. But if we don't want the uh, cross product, 
that this is become a noise or interference and you call as intermodulation distortion. Right? So I think uh, for, for this particular um, example, this is quite similar with the one that I have given in chapter one, uh, but you still can do again and try yourself uh, the, to, to do the cross product of different signals. And uh, I always like to uh, advise my student to answer this or produce the cross product in, in table so that you can understand how the frequency comes uh, or produced by the mixing processes. Right. So that's it for chapter two. Uh, we'll see again in chapter three uh, and on the next video. Thank you.